hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tenebakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use the MM Wormhole Framework in Swift. Now, why would you want to use a wormhole framework? Now, to begin, what will this help us achieve? Now, to begin, uh, let's say you have an application with Xcode and an application extension. Uh, so let's say, in this case, we have an iOS application and we have a watchOS uh, application extension. All right. So this is an extension to our iOS application. Now, as you probably know, uh, you are not able to communicate data between these two targets in Xcode. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure why Apple didn't include a very easy way for us to do this, but they didn't. And so developers have to resort to using these uh, things called app groups uh, in between, such as this. So we have to use these things called app groups that will help us communicate data between iOS and watchOS. So like for example, we can sort of have this little hole going here, and there's this dotted line going through. Now there's just one problem with app groups. They're not the best and most easy thing to use. They are quite painful to set up. Uh, and so, setting these up, as I said, since it's so hard, we really don't have another choice. However, this is where MM wormholes come in. Uh, essentially, there is this framework that the great guys at Mutual Mobile have created called MM wormhole. And so, essentially, what it does is it does all this app group stuff for you. In the code, it just seems like there's just one big wormhole going from iOS to watchOS or any of your other application extensions. In fact, there can be a wormhole going through from your iOS application to your iOS application. Uh, you can transmit data between your classes, for example, uh, or listen for data, uh, or you know stuff like that. It can pass the data through. Uh, and actually, as an example, uh, essentially what this does uh, is it uses the CF notifications uh, from Darwin. Uh, and so essentially what this will do uh, is it will take you, okay, so let's say you created an application where you had an iOS application where you had three buttons. One is one, two, and three buttons. Uh, and on the watchOS end, you had a label, all right? And that label would tell you which button you clicked. Label or button number one, button number two, or button number three. Uh, and so essentially what you could do uh, is in, you could create this channel uh, uh, or a wormhole uh, and you could pass a piece of data uh, which would essentially be called in this case, let's say, uh, number clicked. All right, so now we're passing a piece of data called number clicked and let's say the user clicked number two it would be a string called number two. All right, I'll get into why it's a string in just a second, uh, and I will tell you, but just give me one second. So essentially this is the wormhole going from, as you know, iOS uh, to watchOS. Uh, and of course, this is taking care of all the apps group stuff and all that stuff for us, so we just think that it's one big hole that it's going through. Uh, and so essentially, we post this data to the wormhole or channel, uh, and then watchOS has this continuous asynchronous loop going, I guess you could call it. Uh, it's essentially just the CF notifications though. Uh, and essentially right as it detects uh, an update in the wormhole for something called number clicked here, uh, it's going to call a block of code that you give it, a function or something of that sort, uh, and that can do whatever you want with the data that it gave you, which in this case is the number two. And so you can, in watchOS, uh, set a label to, for example, if I draw a little watch here, no, probably not the right proportion though. Okay, so this is much better. And around this. So now you can create a label which said, okay, they click number two, and so number two appears here. 
Now, the reason I made this a string is because, uh, as far as I know, uh, these wormhole, the data that you pass through this wormhole uh, has to be NS coding compliant uh, so that it can actually transfer the data. Uh, however, uh, strings and more primitive Swift types uh, are actually not NS coding compliant, and so you cannot, unfortunately, pass them through the wormhole. However, if you were to convert something like an integer or a string to an NS string, that would work because it's being imported from foundation, which, of course, as we know, is, I mean, first of all, uh, foundation is imported by UIKit, and since UIKit is being imported in the iOS application, most probably, uh, this works. All right, we have NS string, uh, and NS string conforms to the uh, NS coding protocol, uh, and so it is able to get encoded and transferred to watch OS. And that is why we are using a string. And this is essentially what we're going to be doing in today's video. All right, so let's get to the Mac part now, where I'm going to be showing you how you can use wormholes to transfer data using app groups really simply. And of course, through the code, it literally just looks like there's one big pipe and the wormhole is taking care of all this apps groups, uh, I mean, app group stuff for you. All right. Let's get to the Mac part now. So welcome back to the Mac part. And now I'm going to be showing you how you can use the MM wormhole framework in order to uh, connect app extensions and applications. However, for simplicity in this example, uh, I'm going to be showing you how you can use a wormhole in just one class in one application. Uh, as you can see over here, I have a simulator running. Uh, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for example, let's say I click button number three. It'll say new wormhole message three. Let's say click button number two, button number one, really whichever one I click is going to go into this new wormhole message. Uh, and so essentially now, first of all, it seems like I'm just clicking the button and setting the label text, but no, I'm actually not. What I'm doing is I'm allowing this to go through the wormhole. Like let's say this is a class over here. This is a view controller class. I'm essentially going through the wormhole and back into, you know, the view. it's going through the wormhole back into the view controller class. Uh, and so through that, I'm able to transport it. I mean, it's just a longer way of getting it to the label, uh, but it works and it shows the uh, point of the wormhole. So now to begin, as you can see, this is my Xcode project. I have a very simple storyboard, just three buttons and a label. Uh, that's really it. Uh, if I see in my Xcode project here, if I go to capabilities, as you can see under app groups, uh, I have enabled app groups and I have enabled a, a special app group that I've created called group.com.tbss.wormhole example. Uh, in this case, I'm calling it wormhole example. You can call it whatever you want. Now, uh, essentially what I did to import MM Wormhole is now if you see from their GitHub, uh, what you can do is you can just take the source files and drag them into your project. So I took the source files and I dragged them into a new group called MM Wormhole Source. And so now as you can see we have all those MM Wormhole source files in this group. And then when Xcode asked me if it wanted to create a bridging header, and I, I said yes to that. Uh, and in the bridging header, just import mmwormhole.h and mmwormholesession.h. And then you have everything already imported into your Swift files. Oh, for that target at least. Uh, if you have multiple targets, just like an app extension, then as you are dragging in your mmwormhole source files, you want to make sure that you copy it for your t other targets as well. Uh, and this will automatically create bidding headers uh, for all of your targets uh, and just uh, put these uh, imports into every single one of those bridging headers. Then you can go into your Swift file, which in this case is viewcontroller.swift. Uh, and just for simplicity, what I've done is I've created an extension to the string class and it basically I've created a computed property uh, called 2ns, which uh, returns an ns string. Uh, and so basically it just returns self as ns string. Uh, and so essentially in my view controller class, however, uh, I do have the IB outlet for the output label, but I have also created a constant called wormhole. Uh, and this is a new type of MM wormhole, which again, we are importing from our bridging header. And I'm giving it the group identifier for the, uh, applic for the app group that I just created. And then an optional directory of wormhole example. 
Then, in my view did load, I'm making my wormhole listen for the message number clicked. Whenever it receives a message called number clicked, it's going to run this block of code and give me this result variable. Now, result is an optional any, not even an any object, it's just an optional any. And so here, with an if let statement, I check whether or not this is nil. If it's nil, it won't run this. If it's if it if result has a value, uh, then it'll be put into final result, and then this line of code will be called. Then from the view controller class, I call the display function, and I pass it a result as, of course, my final result as a string. Then in the display function itself, as I, I mean, as I said, I take a result as a string, and I set the output label's text to new wormhole message result. Then all I need to do is I have three IB actions. Uh, first of all, for the first button, the second button, and the third button. Now all of these just do wormhole.pass message object. And for the first button, we pass the string one dot to ns. And again, this has to be ns coding compliant, and that's why. And the identifier is number clicked. And for button number two, it's two. And for button number three, it's three. Now, if I actually command click uh, on string, uh, as you can see, uh, if I search here, NS coding, uh, sorry, NS coding, see there's no results really. Uh, so, sort of string class is not uh, conforming to uh, NS coding. However, if I go into NS string, which is, of course, from foundation, as you can see, it, uh, it conforms to NS secure coding, which in turn informs to NS coding. And so it is able to be used by worm uh, by the MM wormhole framework. Now, for example, if I were to remove this and just give it a normal string, as you can see, it says cannot convert value of type string to expected argument type NS coding. However, an NS string can be. And that is how it works. Let's just run it one more time uh, just to show you how it actually works. And as I said, I click the second button, new wormhole message 2, 3, 1, really whichever order I click it in. And that's going to be it for the wormhole tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much. Uh, that's going to be it for this tutorial today. Uh, again, I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, and if it did help you, Please make sure to leave a like below, uh, share the video with whoever you think it can help, uh, and you can even leave some you know, feedback, suggestions, uh, really even questions uh, in the comments down below. You can email me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet to me at tajimani. That's going to be it for this uh, tutorial. Again, if it really helped you out and you like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing, and that's going to be it for this tutorial today. Goodbye.